वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग फंड ऑफ फैमिली दिस वीडियो इज़ अ पार्ट ऑफ नेटवर्क थियरी लेक्चर सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू सुपर पोजिशन थियरम विथ वन प्रैक्टिकल एग्जाम्पल एंड दिस वीडियो आई एम मेकिंग बेस्ड ऑन रिक्वेस्ट ऑफ वन ऑफ माई स्टूडेंट ही टोल्ड मी कैन यू प्लीज एक्सप्लेन वॉट इज द बेसिक थियरिटिकल पार्ट विच इज देर विथ सुपर पोजिशन थियरम सो आई थॉट आई शुड एक्सप्लेन वॉट इज दैट थियरम विच इज बीन यूज इन इलेक्ट्रिकल नेटवर्क सो लेट अस सी फर्स्ट वॉट इज द बेसिक थियरम विच इज देर विथ सुपर पोजिशन थियरम सो माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स हियर सुपर पोजिशन थियरम इज यूज टू आइडेंटिफाई वोल्टेज और करंट थ्रू एनी लीनियर एलिमेंट राइट एंड द टोटल करंट और वोल्टेज इन अ पार्ट ऑफ लीनियर सर्किट इज इक्वल्स टू द एल्जेब्रिक सम ऑफ करंट वोल्टेज प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय ईच सोर्स इज सेपरेटली सो फॉर एग्जांपल हियर यू सी हियर वी आर हैविंग सर्किट इन दैट वी आर हैविंग 60 वोल्टेज बैटरी ओवर हियर एंड 10 एम्पियर करंट सोर्स ओवर हियर राइट एंड वी आर डील विथ टू फाइंड करंट पासिंग थ्रू टू ओम रजिस्टर सो वेन यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड करंट पासिंग थ्रू दिस टू ओम रजिस्टर देन यू हैव टू फाइंड करंट पासिंग थ्रू टू ओम रजिस्टर बिकॉज ऑफ सिक्सटी वोल्टेज बैटरी एज वेल एज करंट पासिंग थ्रू दिस टू ओम रजिस्टर बिकॉज ऑफ टेन एम्पियर करंट सोर्स एंड एल्जेब्रिक सम ऑफ बोथ विल बी टोटल करंट पासिंग थ्रू दिस टू ओम रजिस्टर दैट इज वॉट द बेजिक डेफिनेशन विच इज रिप्रेजेंटेड ओवर हियर नाउ हियर वन थिंग दैट यू नीड टू नोट डाउन वेन यू इवेल्युएट करंट और वोल्टेज ऑल यू नीड टू डू इज यूल हैव टू रिप्लेस ऑल द वोल्टेज सोर्सेज बाय शॉर्ट सर्किट and all the current sources by open circuit so i'll show you how to provide short circuit instead of voltage source and how to provide open circuit instead of current source so let us try to understand that by this practical example so if you observe in this question we are deal with to find current passing through two ohm resistor so my dear students what we will do is first i'll be identifying current passing through two ohm resistor because of 60 voltage battery so let me redraw this circuit first now i have redrawn the circuit right and now what i'll do is i'll calculate current passing through two ohm resistor because of 60 voltage battery and let us say that is i1 right so see because of 60 voltage we are deal with to find right so other voltage sources should be short circuited and current sources should be open circuited so see this current source of 10 ampere that should be open circuited so let me remove this now we are just deal with to find what is the value of i1 because of this 60 voltage source so you see this 60 voltage that is applied across this two terminal right so what is current i1 current i is voltage divided by resistance right as in between these two terminal voltage is 60 right and resistance of this wing that is series of 2 and 4 so 2 plus 4 so that is 60 divided by 6 so i can say this is 10 ampere right now my dear students what i'll do is i'll be calculating current passing through two ohm resistor because of 10 ampere current source so what i'll do is now i'll redraw this circuit first now let us say current passing through two ohm resistor that is i2 and now what i'll do is i'll be considering 10 ampere current source so this voltage source that should be short circuited right so what i'll be doing is i'll be removing this voltage source now and instead of that i need to provide short circuit right now when you have this 10 ampere current source how to find i2 so when you see this circuit initially at that time you will be observing this connection is bit awkward so all you can do is you can redraw this circuit right why the reason is you see here there is a short here there is a short so what is getting shorted that is bit difficult to identify directly by viewing this circuit so what i'll be doing is let us say this is point a and let us say this is point b 
So what I'll do is I'll redraw this. So here I'm placing point A and here I'm placing point B. So see A to B current source is there with 10 ampere. So let me draw it over here. Now let us try to understand how this 5 ohm resistor is connected. So see this B terminal that is shorted over here. So this is B terminal, right? So you see this 5 ohm that is there in between A and B. So let us connect this 5 ohm in between A and B, right? Now if you observe, see this B is shorted over here. So this is also terminal B, right? So if you observe in between B terminal, this wing is connected, right? Which is of 2 ohm and 4 ohm in series. So you see how connection is there from B to B resistance are connected like this, right? One resistor is of 4 ohm and one resistor is there of 2 ohm. And see now I2 that is happening like this, right? So that is how B to B connection is there. So now question is what is I2? Now you see across this two resistors potential is same which is B. So if potential difference is zero, how much current will pass through this wing? It will be zero obviously, right? As here potential is fixed. So potential difference across this two resistor is zero. I can say I2 over here that will be zero ampere. Right. So as per superposition theorem, total current that is I1 which is 10 ampere plus I2 which is 0 ampere. So total I that is I1 plus I2 and here I1 is 10 and I2 is 0. So total current is 10 ampere which is passing through this 2 ohm resistor. So my dear students. Here only few things that you don't need to note down when you use superposition theorem. See, you will have to keep only one source and then other sources should be replaced as per short circuit with voltage source and open circuit with current source. And that is what you will have to do it for all the sources which is present in this circuit. Right. And at last you will have to provide algebraic sum. But if you have multiple sources, in that case what happens is you will have to solve circuit many times, right? So if complex circuits are there, but you have few sources in the circuit, at that time superposition theorem is helpful. But when you have many sources in the circuit, right, at that time what will happen is you will be observing that your calculation will be a bit tedious because of Many times you'll have to solve same problems and at the last you'll have to do algebraic sum of all the elements, right? So you should think about whether to apply superposition or not. What I personally prefer is I don't use superposition in normal cases. But if question is based on superposition only, at that time definitely we should be using superposition theorem. I hope you have understood this video. Thank you so much for watching this video.